Lindenwood Gardens in Grove, and joining us is the garden's founder, Leonard Miller. Well, Leonard, it's a pleasure to be back here at Lindenwood, and thank you for having us up today. Well, that was a special day for me. <laughs> well, thank you. It is. It's your birthday, and we're glad that we can celebrate it with you. <laughs> yes, that's very nice. Well, I've been here in the spring before. Lindenwood's known for its wonderful rhododendron and azalea collection, but in the fall, your Japanese maples really come to life. Yes, we have a lot of color in the garden in the fall. And these plants uh, generally are the last to, to show color mm -hmm. of all the species. Uh, so here it is late, uh, or actually early November. Yes. A lot of leaves are already fallen. These are now coming, coming into on. color. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed, um, you know, if someone's thinking about putting one in the landscape, that those that are getting a little bit more light color up first. Yes. And then as the leaves fall off the, the canopy trees, they'll start to color more. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and that creates a situation where you can have color for a long time. Oh, very good, very good. Um, tell me a bit about this cultivar. It is just on fire. Uh, wonderful specimen. I really love it. Yes, this is a, a palmatum, mm -hmm. which is one of the Japanese species from Japan. Mm -hmm. This is probably found in someone's garden, actually, which uh, most of them are. Yeah. Uh, this one's Omarama, Omarama, and uh, uh, probably named after some mountain somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, it's a beautiful fall plant. Uh, we have a contest here to find out which one's the prettiest of all year. <laughs> and, uh, it's, and this wins uh, every other year. Okay. So it's a special fall mm -hmm. color. And it's a little bit more unusual in the nursery train. Is that correct? Yes, the, a little bit hard uh, to find? You'll have to <laughs> Google it, and then you can usually find these things for sale. Uh, the local nurseries carry uh, just a few varieties. Okay. And this is one um, that we often find. It's a little more common, right? The yes. Sangu uh, if you would walk in in the mm -hmm. spring, you would find uh, this plant. Mm -hmm. um, it has green leaves, mm -hmm. and it, on first uh, observation, it doesn't seem as attractive maybe as the as the red ones, but mm -hmm. fantastic uh, winter color because it has uh, red stems. It's called a coral bark, right? And mm -hmm. also the great fall color. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's just beginning to turn yellow, and really quite quite nice in the in the uh, fall. And we see a lot of that red coloration um, on the leaf petioles right now, and on younger trees you'll see it in the bark as well. Yes, so mm -hmm. uh, when you first get your tree, if it's real small, mm -hmm. it'll be almost all coral during the winter time. Mm -hmm. Really great, it's great plant. Certainly a beautiful cultivar. Um, there's another more uh, rare one back here. Kim, this is a, a very difficult name. It's sort of a tongue twister. Uh, it has a Japanese name. There's no common name that I know. It's Aka Shitasu Sawa. And uh, it has a reticulated pattern. Uh, in the spring, it has uh, red and white um, coloration. And then mm -hmm. it fills in with green, with white. And then we have one in the fall mm -hmm. where it's sort of orange and white. Yeah, and so, you can see in, right along the vein on both of these that there's a little uh, memory of that variegation. It's not quite all colored up yet. This mm -hmm. tree is, is a little bit on the smaller statue, would mm -hmm. fit into a garden, mm -hmm. uh, in your garden, so not too big. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this one's- This is full size. This is full size, mm -hmm. uh, and it can be pruned a little bit. This one's never been pruned, okay. but not more than like eight feet tall here, mm -hmm. and uh, about 12, to 15 feet across. Has a really nice spreading habit. I like that. Um, on the more compact side is this uh, another very common cultivar, just the green cut leaf. Yes, uh, this is maple. called a dissectum mm -hmm. type. Mm -hmm. the, the very fine leaves, um, um, also a palmatum, right. but uh, the Beautiful. green is in the spring and it'll be green, uh, very soft texture, beautiful uh, texture in mm -hmm. your garden. And then in the fall, you get this great orange and green uh, show, uh, spectacular uh, fall color. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
This one's a large plant for this size. Usually they're only a two foot tall. Yeah. And uh, you can see we, we've had this out about, it's probably 18 years old. Okay. And uh, so it's spread out. It's pretty nice. It is a pretty large specimen for this, this yeah. cultivar. Um, a lot of times, now you talked about the green foliage, a lot of times in the spring when people are shopping for their Japanese maples, they're pulled towards those red-leafed varieties. Yes, and, and you probably ought to have one of both, you know, <laughs> <laughs> one red one and one green one that can do this in the fall Yeah, foliage. you're not going to get fall color like that from the no, red, but exactly. you'll have that color throughout the season. You know, the red cultivars, both the dissectums and the uh, regular leaf ones, uh, generally turn a little bit more red in the fall, but not a really a big change like okay. you see in this plant. Okay. Not a eye, you know, knock, this knock your eye out. Absolutely. Well, there's one more uh, really attractive Japanese maple I wanted to take a look at this okay. way. Mm -hmm. Leonard, this is another really eye-catching specimen here in the garden. Tell me about this cultivar. Well, this is probably 20 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very dwarf plant. Hard to get it to, to grow up, uh, but it's uh, sort of reaching for the light here, mm -hmm. quite uh, wide. It must be 10 or 12 feet across here, and only five feet, uh, maybe five feet tall yeah. at the highest. But uh, spectacular fall color. And what's the cultivar name? This is a dissectum called ball smith. So it's a ball palmatum mm -hmm. dissectum ball smith. Okay. Now we've been looking at what would be the true Japanese maple by common name, and those are all Acer palmatum. But there's another very attractive maple from Japan, uh, Acer japonicum, and I know you have a really nice specimen of that. Yeah, we'll go check it out. Okay. Well, Leonard, this tree has a very similar structure to the Acer palmatum, but the leaves are quite different. I brought some, um, one of the dissectum uh, palmatum leaves and then one of the regular. Um, certainly quite a difference here when we look at these. Yes, this has a 10 or 12 lobes. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot more lobes. And certainly this is a very large plant, mature mm -hmm. uh, leaf. They, and younger uh, plants are not going to have this large a leaf. Mm -hmm. but but the, uh, this is in nature, or the common name is called the full moon maple. And the reason is the leaf is almost round. Oh, yeah. And this mm -hmm. one is a selection called O. Isami. Okay. Uh, actually probably collected from the mountains of Japan mm -hmm. for its beautiful fall color. Now, it, as this yellow changes, it'll turn to the, the red oh. and the orange. And so it, it has multiple colors. Mm -hmm one of the most spectacular fall plants you can put in your garden. And as a species, the Acer japonicum are a little bit more cold tolerant than... Yes, uh, it seemed to be yeah. from the mountains, a little mm -hmm. higher, you know, up and... and uh, but they'll, they'll take the, the uh, heat of Oklahoma, you mm -hmm. just have to have a uh, shade from another tree. Right. Well, Leonard, as always, it's been such a pleasure to come up to Lindenwood and visit with you. Thank you so much for having us out. Mm -hmm. I believe this is the latest you've come, and mm -hmm. I don't know, we've been doing this for about 25 <laughs> years now. It's been great. It sure has, and uh, I'm glad to make it here in the fall, and you have a wonderful birthday. <laughs> it's going to be my pleasure to have you all here this today. <laughs>